Is SARS-CoV-2, the virus causes COVID-19, is it airborne? It's all, that's all over the news, right? That is the biggest question everybody is, is freaking out about it. So let's talk about what that means and what that doesn't mean. Next slide, please. There are five main modes of viral transmission. So every virus has a mode or multiple modes of transmission. So direct, so direct contact with bodily fluid, vector through a mosquito, for example, a vehicle like uh, improperly cooked Thanksgiving turkey stuffing, uh, droplet transmission, which we all think of as coughing and sneezing, and then finally airborne. Next slide, please. Could you answer a question on that? Yeah, absolutely. You went back to that one? Sure. When you're saying vehicle, there's been some commentary that the virus can live on surfaces for periods of time, but you describe vehicle as food related. So a food, food is, it's so a vehicle is anything that is not alive that can transmit disease. Ah, so you weren't specifically narrowing it to food. It could be anything. It could be a microphone. Yep. I touch and right. then you touch. Yep, absolutely, I but okay. not a living creature okay. or insect or, All right. yep. So what differentiates between all these different types of transmission? So an aerosol is any collection of particles suspended in the air. That could be spray paint, it could be hairspray, it could be anything, it could be dust, anything that you put in the air is an aerosol. So when we start talking about viral transmission, we're talking about the size of the aerosol. That's what makes the difference. So when you have large drop droplets, they fall to the ground immediately. They're big, they're heavy, if anybody's interested, usually greater than 100 microns. So those fall, they're wet, and they stay there. Small droplets, they will go out two or three feet, and they'll fall to the ground, also wet. They're not evaporated. So airborne particles are when the water evaporates and it just leaves the virus nuclei to float around in the air for hours without requiring circulation. So measles is one of the most contagious diseases in the world because its primary mode of transmission is airborne, okay? Next slide, please. Let's look at a visualization of this. So if the uh, first person there is the infected person, he or she may cough or sneeze. We've all coughed or sneezed when you feel the wet droplets on your skin. Those are large, heavy droplets that are falling to the floor quickly. The small droplets are the mist. They're going two to three feet away. You can still inhale those. And as Commissioner Rogers said, it could be on a table. It could be on anything that lands on any surface. Now, the big, no one is questioning that SARS-CoV-2 is transmitted via a large and small droplet. There is no discussion about that whatsoever. It's obvious. The question is, can it be airborne? So can it reach the third uh, person on this uh, diagram? Now, there's a lot of research that says, yes, there it can. They have found it floating in hospital wards for three hours in the air. But I'm going to tell you, as your epidemiologist, that it doesn't matter. Next slide, please. The reason why it doesn't matter is because the primary mode of transmission is not airborne. It may be able to be airborne, sure, but it's not its primary mode because if it was its primary mode, we'd all already have it. It would just be an astronomical takeover of cases and that's not the case. So sure, it might happen in certain scenarios, but the bottom line, the public health messaging around that is the same. The fewer people you have together, the better. The more distance between the people, the better. The more you keep your hands out of your mucous membranes and mouth, the better. And of course, the more you are covered, the better. And so that is your uh, public service announcement from your friendly local epidemiologist. <laughs> so would you, um, would you respond to an indoor versus outdoor environment on the more distance the better i mean everything else the fewer people everything else i get but we're told that outside is much safer than inside so is that consistent with this so yes uh, the same things apply now outside gets us a couple advantages that we don't really have indoors so what we know now is that sars-cov-2 dies very quickly in sunlight 
and I mean fast, any level of sunlight. So just being outside, we're getting that extra sort of killing power, if you will, of the virus just from being out in the light. That's not enough to stop a droplet before it gets in your mouth, but it's certainly good for surfaces and those kind, and floaty, quote unquote, airborne sort of virus particles. Now, if you can be six feet away, uh, I mean, the official messaging for mask guidance outside if, is if you can main, maintain six feet away, you don't need a mask. Now, I would caution, if you're not taking wind direction into account and someone coughs, it's actually gonna make it worse, right? Because things travel more with the air current. And if you're downwind from someone that's coughing without a mask, it's not gonna matter that you're six feet away. It's not gonna matter at all. So I would kind of consider the ventilation or the wind and that kind of thing. Like if it's a still day, fine. But if you have Oregon wind everywhere, I'd wear a mask just to be safe if it's not an immediate household member. Okay, thank you.